This video covers two problems that were not worked, in, not worked on in class. The document that I'm working on is posted in Blackboard. You can see the title up at top if you want to put open that one up, or you can open up your own notes from the class file. I'm in the tab second worksheet called Changes, and here we see part one, which we solved. Let's go down to part two, where we're moving this to this video. This is uh, the topic that we're covering here is a change in accounting principle. And here's our information. Ariaga Corp has a tax rate of 40% and income before non-operating items of 1,392,000. It also has the following items that we see here. So this uh, formatting got a little bit off. Okay, now I see this information. Unusual loss, discontinued operations loss. In other words, a loss on discontinued operations. We can assume this is net of tax. So we have no other information here. Gain on disposal of equipment and a change in accounting principle which increases the prior year's net income. The question that we're asked for here is what is the amount of income tax expense that Ariaga would report in its income statement? How do we know what amount of income tax expense is going to be? Well, think about this problem as an entire income statement. And the one box that we want is that calculation of income tax expense. I'm going to insert some rows here so that I can have some space to work. Okay, so what's the the top of an income statement is typically good, typically going to be sales revenue minus cost of goods sold is gross profit minus the operating expenses gives us operating income. We start this problem with the fact that we are given operating income. Which which piece of information here? It doesn't use the words operating income, but of this uh, few bits of information that we have, what means operating income or income from operations? In this problem, it's called income before non-operating items. It's 1,392,000. So that's going to be our starting point. I'm just going to format these numbers. Okay, so what would we see after operating income? The next items that we would report are the non-operating items. So we have to decide of these four items that we have, which one or more are are non-operating items. They would go under the heading other revenues and expenses, uh, other revenues and gains, or other expenses and losses. Well, we see this one item here called unusual loss. That's a non-operating item. Now this is a loss, so we can either show this as negative if we want to, or we can report it as positive, but if we do, we just need to make sure that we're subtracting the 222000 from the operating income once we do our next subtotal. Either way is fine. Companies report uh, probably 50-50, whether they show losses as negatives or not. Is there anything else here that is a non-operating item? That's what this question is testing, that we know that. Okay, discontinued operations, that does not belong in the non-operating section. How about gain on disposal of equipment? That is a non-operating item. That would be in the other revenues and gains section. So this is a gain that's going to be added to our income from operations, so we can leave it as is. And we know that the change in accounting principle uh, is not a non-operating item. So the next question, what is this subtotal here? We know how to calculate it. I put the 220, the loss as negative, so I can just use the sum function here. What do we call this? We call this income before taxes. Now, did we need to know that? And did we need to do that subtotal to solve this problem? No. What we really need is the number here, income tax expense. So we didn't, for this problem, we didn't have to know what income before taxes was, but the question could have asked us, uh, what is income before taxes that Ariaga would report on its income statement? But since it's asked us for income tax expense, we take our income before taxes and multiply it by this tax rate of 40%. And there we're done. This is the answer to the question. But let's continue just so that we know how to account for all the information that's shown here. After income tax expense, normally what would come next is net income. And we would say income before taxes minus income tax expense equals net income. There's one situation in which that is not the case. And that one situation is once we have uh, gains and losses on discontinued operations. 
And that's what we have here. So then what do we call this? We don't call it net income. We call this line income from continuing operations. All right, so income from continuing operations is 730,800. And from that, the next thing we report is this dis loss on discontinued operations. And what do we call this next line here? We call this net income. Remember, if there had been income attributable to non-controlling interests, we would report that directly below the net income. So even though we're not asked to calculate net income, we can uh, we know that it would be, if we needed to, it would be 124,800. How about this change in accounting principle, which increases the prior year's income? That is not going to affect the current year's income. What will this $318,000 affect? It'll affect the current year's beginning retained earnings. So if we're increasing prior year's income, we would increase beginning retained earnings for the year that we're reporting here. So that solves the first problem that we did not have time to do in class. Uh, we did problem three. Let's go down here to problem four. This was a correction of an error. Newman Corp began operations on January 1st, 2017. During its first three years of operations, the company reported the following. Again, I need to adjust. I had inserted a, a row somewhere before and I got my formatting a little bit off. Here we go. Okay, so net income for the three years that the company was in business and dividends declared over that same three-year period. We have the following information for the current year 2020. Um, let's take let's make the assumption that we are working in the financial reporting department of Newman Corp. We are uh, accountants preparing the 2020 uh, financials. Specifically, we're told to prepare the retained earnings statement. Remember, retained earnings statement beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends gives us ending retained earnings so we have income before tax we have two changes to our financials um, in the year 2020 we noticed that we had understated depreciation expense in 2018 and remember we have our notes here that when we correct an error in the year that the error is found, we're going to restate that prior year. So we're going to issue a new income statement for 2018. And in the current year, the year the error is found, we're going to adjust beginning retain earnings for that error. So the prior period to uh, the prior period adjustment that we're going to record to retain earnings in 2020, we have to think about this. Are we increasing or decreasing retained earnings based on this information? So we have to do a little bit of thinking here. Well, if 2018's depreciation expense was too low, and we're correcting that now, that means 2018's net income was too what? Too low or too high? 2018's net income was too high. So we need to, let me write this, uh, insert a line here, just so I can have some more space for my notes. In 2020, we need to decrease, because we're making an adjustment that decreases net income for 2018, and the effect of that is to decrease re beginning retained earnings in 2020. We're going to need to know that when we're putting our retained earnings statement together. How about this next item, line 67 here, cumulative decrease in income from change in inventory methods before tax. What do we need to know? A couple things. One, when we have a change in inventory method, that is our change in accounting principle. And what happens? How do we account for a change in accounting principle? Similar to an error, we need to adjust beginning retained earnings. Okay, so they tell us here this was a decrease in income. So in 2020, we need to decrease beginning retained earnings. 
We have dividends declared. We're going to need that for doing our retained earnings statement. And we have a, again, sorry, to keep these items on the same line. Effective tax rate, 40%. So these items here are before taxes. So we're going to have to use this knowledge of the tax rate and for our beginning in our income in 2020 is uh, before taxes. We're going to have to get our after tax numbers. All right, give myself some space to put my solution here. All right, so two questions. One, prepare the retained earnings statement. And then two, assume the company restricted retained earnings in the amount of 280,000. What would the company report as total retained earnings on the balance sheet. Let's start just with this first one item. So the retained earnings statement, I'm not going to bother with the three line header. We know how to do that. Let's just get right into what we need to do here. Okay, so let's start with the beginning balance of retained earnings. Beginning balance January 1st. And because we have a correct, we're going to make two adjustments to retain earnings. Let's start with our beginning balance as reported. In other words, what did retained earnings end with or end at on December 31st of 2019? We end the prior year, that becomes our beginning balance in the next year. We'll start there and then we'll wor worry about our two adjustments here. Okay, so what was beginning retained earnings? We're not given that specifically. We need to calculate that amount. So what is retained earnings? Retained earnings is the accumulation of all the company's income over its entire life, less all of the pro all of the dividends the company has declared over its life. So do we have the information for all of the income as of the end of 2019 for the company's life? We sure do. Add up all of this income and from that subtract the accumulation of all of the dividends that the company has declared. That is what the ending retained earnings was at the end of 2019. Just write a note here. So equal to the total of all income less all dividends in the company's life through 1231.19. And we have that information up here. Okay, next thing we need to do is make these adjustments because in, during the year 2020, we, st we noticed two things that we needed to change. We have two changes to prior financials. Those are both accounted for as adjustments to, to match this up here. Those are just both recorded as adjustments to beginning retained earnings. So let's write this down. So the prior period adjustment uh, the, or the correction of depreciation expense error. Okay, so what does that do to retained earnings? Well, we need to think about what was, uh, we want to decrease retained earnings by this, oops. Decrease retained earnings by 100,000, but this is before taxes. So we need to find the after-tax impact of this correction. And so what is the after-tax impact? We take the before tax. We had a decrease to net income of 100,000. And we need to say from that, subtract out the income tax expense on that or I guess in this case, since this was a decrease to income, the in income tax benefit. Another way to solve this would be to say, let's take 60%, right? If 40% is the tax rate, the after-tax component is the remaining 60% of this 100,000. We can see that here because the tax expense or the tax benefit was 40,000. When we remove the 40,000 from the 100,000, we get 60,000. Okay, so we are going to decrease retained earnings by 60,000. For the correction of the error. 
And then we have one other adjustment to beginning retained earnings. We have a cumulative decrease in income from the change in accounting principle. Or we can write here, change in inventory methods. Okay, so again, this is going to be a decrease in income. The pre-tax amount was 140000 so we need to find the after-tax impact of the change in accounting principle. Before tax was 140000 From that, we subtract the tax expense, 40% of 140000 This is also like saying, what if I took another way of calculating this? Let me do it here, is by saying 140000 times 60%. This is the after-tax component. And since it decreases net income, I'm going to put in a negative sign. Now we have the beginning balance of retained earnings as adjusted. Seven hundred fifty-six thousand. Now I can continue on with my retained earnings statement as usual. Add net income. All right. The one thing that we need to do this is income before tax. So finds net income, meaning after tax income. And so again, we can take our income before tax of nine hundred sixty thousand, and we can multiply it by sixty percent. Because if 40% of that pre-tax income went to taxes, the remaining 60% becomes our net income. And then we subtract dividends declared. We are given that dividends declared is 400000 Now notice that we see we're given information here that says of these 400000 dividends declared that 100,000 will be paid in the next accounting period. We can ignore that. It doesn't matter. What we're accounting for is the dividends declared, not cash paid out. And now we have our ending retained earnings at the end of the year 2020. Take our adjusted beginning retained earnings, add the net income, and subtract the dividends. And we get our result of 932000 I hope you have found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, and I'm happy to help.